Good afternoon, my friends, uh, all of you who are seeing me around the world. For me in Europe, there is afternoon, oh, in evening actually already. And we have a Monday, as always, Mighty Mondays, a series of leadership intro and just about leadership videos. Um, every Monday afternoonish time. And today I would like uh, to address a question to you, my audience. Can anyone be a leader, even as a street cleaner? Can you be a leader? Over the past couple of months, I have been asked many times on the subject of leadership. Many people are confused about the world, what that implies, what actually leaders need to do, how they have to distinguish themselves as leaders. Also, they have asked me questions, I mean, probably from uh, people from the lower than the medium level. Management, uh, is leadership only for the top guys like CEOs, directors, top level managers, business owners? Yes and no. A leader can be a CEO, but can CEO be a leader? That's a totally different question. And today, uh, let's, I have prepared for you a four teaching points, uh, and I will try to answer you with a question on the subject. Can a street cleaner be a leader? You may think of you, that's probably one of the lowest of the professions, street cleaner. He cleans streets. A janitor, perhaps, in a different way of saying the words. You see, um, my mentor and a friend of mine, John Maxwell, in his book, writing about a leadership, defines 21 irreputable laws on leadership. So 21 things, 21 characteristics every leader should be aware of in order to figure out what is the real definition of the leadership. So my goal for today is to clarify all the doubts all the sort of this mistiness around the word leadership to actually demonstrate you uh, through the four factors, four things from the book uh, and talking about how a street cleaner can be a leader. So let's go through all of them. So what are the aspects that define leaders or make leaders others than the rest of us? So first of all, their lid is high. You see, leadership can be measured by a lid. The lid we put on top of us, that is our leadership. The higher we put the lid, the higher our leadership is. And if, as John typically demonstrates in his seminars, I have also learned to do the same thing. Think, and I have not found the better way to demonstrate this. If you think that this is your level of leadership, your organization cannot abo go above it. Even if you are a street cleaner, it cannot go above it. So, they're happy to dream, they're happy to visualize, and they're happy to set a path to their and organizational growth. They know the process, that is the thing number two, ladies and gentlemen. Good leaders understand that the road to their success is defined in their daily agendas. It's not defined in the events they attend, it's not defined in the people they follow, it is defined through their daily agenda, what they do on the daily basis. So they know very well the law of the process. So you can't go through the leadership growth in one day or through a single event. You have to continue see and continue see, apply these things into your life and then grow and then reapply or learn new things and apply again. So that's how it all goes. Number three. They know how to navigate. Anyone can steer a ship or a boat if you want so, but it takes a leader to chart a course. I'm quoting again the intro on the law of number four, if my memory is correct, the law of navigation. Leaders know how to navigate. Leaders know from their heart, from their intuition, what will work and what will not. What things will motivate their peers and people they are um, responsible of and what will not, what things they will be able to influence others and what will simply not work. They know it very well. 
and they try and test again and try and test again and try and guess again. So leaders know how to navigate. And number four, which I think is pretty vital for every leader, they lead by example. If they can't get their team be inspired, they show how to do. And that's how they inspire their team. Uh, I have heard many times on how leaders actually have inspired their teams, their peers, to achieve greater results and perhaps overcome enormous odds to get to their objectives. One of the stories that I read recently, which kind of demonstrates me how creative leaders could be, comes from the D-Day. From the D-Day and the story I read in the book Wild at Heart. It so inspired me. It's a great example on how to lead by example. So the story is about Brigadier General Norman Dutch Cota, uh, an assistant to the division or commander of the 29th. And during the D-Day offensive, so during the course of the day, he came across to a group of infantry men led by a captain who were pinned down by Germans. Um, and Germans were situated in a farmhouse. He asked at the captain in command, so what is going on here? What is wrong? Why you are not taking that farmhouse? Well, the captain, with a bit of confusion, um, kind of asked, Sir, but I'm sorry, they are shooting at us. And you would kind of expect me, so you would kind of expect during, it's a D-Day, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very fierce and, you know, uh, and a massive battle going around these guys. And you would expect the general to start yelling at them to encourage them. Of course, he's furious. I mean, how can this group of men cannot uh, take a house of an enemy that is shooting at them? They have to do that. That's the objective. That's the goal. And then the general becomes creative. He asks the captain, the captain, what do you think will happen if I will show you how to take the cops? Captain says, well, yes, sir. Indeed, then we will know how they actually get attacked an enemy and take an objective. General says, very well, can I borrow you from you a couple of grenades? Captain says, yes, please, sir, do so. He gives him a couple of grenades. General takes out his sandar. General takes off his stuff, takes all those couple of hand grenades, uh, and then with a yelling and shouting, advances towards the farmhouse. He then throws those grenades into the, into the windows, through the windows of the farmhouse, also, some of his peers that are joining him do the same thing. Then, all those people wait till the grenades escape, explode, and they carry on in their rounds. They just carry on attacking the house. And in a confusion and perfection, all the enemy soldiers try to escape. And the ones that do not escape, they surrender to the group of attacking men, led by that particular general. Then General returns to the captain and asks him, Captain! Captain says, Yes, sir. Do you now know how to take a farmhouse with an enemy that is shooting at you? Captain says, Yes, absolutely, sir. Now I know. This is how creative leaders can be in showing their example. What an amazing story. Of course. We've gone through four items, four things in, uh, in our list, and there are much more. As I told you, John Maxwell has wrote on 21 irrefutable laws about the readership. Uh, irrefutable things that apply to every leader's, leader's life. And I have shared with you only four of these things today. Do they work? Can anyone be a leader? As we've stated in the title of this Facebook Live video, uh, questioned actually ourselves, can a street cleaner be a good leader? So let's go through four of them. Let's kind of remind ourselves and let's look at them through the street cleaner's protect perspective. Not protective, perspective, again. I'm missing my words, misspelling them. Anyway, their lid is high. It's pretty easy to explain. You know, street cleaners, I have worked as a street cleaner when I was age of 15. I have I, my salary was, I think, 20 bucks a day, uh, sorry, not a day, a month. Now it is high. I couldn't get my job done with an ambition to get a street clean. 
with an ambition how to get my, my sector of the street that I was responsible for clean. How to shovel the snow in the winter. And trust me, I'm from Latvia. And we sometimes have proper winters with deep, deep, deep snow. And it takes a lot of effort. And it was back in 1993 when I had my first job ever in my life as a street cleaner. And trust me, and those days we had a loads of stone, like, you know, a couple of feet, one meter. And it takes a great lot of effort to clean it. So I had to have an ambition, big lid. They know the process, of course. Everyone thinks that it's kind of easy. You take a shovel and you just go and clean the street. But you know, sometimes there were more difficult jobs um, how to do that. Uh, so I had to grow myself. I had to learn new things. Like sometimes the street may be covered with uh, with the concrete plates, and in between those plates you may have tiny bits of grass in between them. And then the only way how to sort of chop that grass off, you can't use uh, you can't use in any sort of um, mowing machine, if you say so. You have to use some other skills because the grass is like it's a tiny, it's about I don't know a couple of inches above the tarmac. So what you do, you take another type of shovel and you ask some people to sharpen it almost as the sharpness of a good knife and then you sort of chop it off uh it's a very difficult job so you have to learn the skills and you have to trust the process that every day as you do this thing your knowledge grows so we have gone through two for the street cleaner they know how to navigate absolutely for sure plus for any street cleaner they have to know how to clean it quick I mean, can you imagine, uh, back in the day, we used to have snowstorms for, you know, a couple of hours, they used, you used to snow and snow, and then you can imagine, and then you clean it, and then it, it, it comes back again, and it's come back again. Even in the countries more north to us, like Sweden and so on, it snows for two or three days, non-stop. So you have to come back to your job again, come back to your job again, and clean and clean and clean again. And you have to do it pretty quick, because if you don't, people are get, people get annoyed and they may have fall down and get injuries and then you may be held accountable for that. So you have to know how to navigate, even if you are, the, are just a street cleaner. And number four, we have gone to the last one. The la last one is lead by example. I'm not sure if you walk around your town, if you walk across your town, but I, I, I love walking and I, read, uh, I live in Riga, Latvia. I, I reside here. I travel a lot and I work in other cities and other countries, but I live here. And as I do my walks around the, around the streets, even in the winter when it snows a lot, I immediately spot when there's a quality street cleaner on, 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 that possesses all those four characteristics. This clean, the, the, I mean, that part of the tarmac is clean all the time, every time, no matter it snows, it is icy or so, and it's always clean, it's not slippery, so it's more or less you have a piece of sand tossed on top of it, or a sh or even a salt, so ice starts melting, to melt, and so on. They lead by example. They show how to do things quicker and better, and others then I can see their goals. Obviously, they can see what should be their goals. The people that can't do that quick or they're a bit lazy in cleaning their sectors of the roads, they have to be led by example, as the same general did. How to do that? So, can a street cleaner be a leader? You know, as, as in mathematics, you take a theory and then you prove it. And you need three points, three more or less bullet points, three touch points to prove your theory. That's a very ancient knowledge I've used for. I think it's more than enough to do so. Yes, a street cleaner can be a good leader. A person can possess good leadership characteristics. Though, from looking into that person, we don't see him as a manager. He's not, perhaps, at that moment, but he's a leader. He has a high lid, he has an ambition to keep his street clean, to keep all the houses and homes clean and nice and tidy, tidy and shiny, so he may do another thing. He knows the process, he knows that he has to learn new things, even on a daily basis, how to do things quickly. He knows how to navigate, how to do his job quick, and the fourth one, he leads by example. His sector, or her sector of the street is clean. So ladies and gentlemen, today we have proved the fact that leadership is not about a title. It is about 
you. Sorry, sorry uh, on pointing you with a finger, but it's, it is about you, about the person. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, once again, I think I didn't tell my name in the very beginning. Sorry about that. My name is Yanis Janowskis and I'm a John Maxwell leadership coach, trainer and speaker. And it was my pleasure to conduct this live demo to you on the matter of leadership on Mighty Mondays. Again, thank you for watching. Thank you all the people that supported me. I uh, saw many comments, now I see only two on the screen. So, Vemino, thank you. Uh, Zara, thank you also well for supporting me with a nice comment, thumbs up thing. They also help me a lot. In case, if you want to send me your opinion, what do you think about uh, my videos or uh, you want to know more about the leadership, feel free to leave a comment below this video. It will be saved in my Facebook feed or feel free to reach me out on a Facebook through my messenger account on my private personal profile or through my Facebook webpage, which is Yanis Janowski's Consulting, so you can use a Facebook church. So lads, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Have a very nice day in that part of the world where you have evening and have a productive day ahead for those that have just started their days. And for those that, going to, that are going to sleep, have a good night. See you next Monday. Bye.